<laughs> Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Adam Ratliff with Adam So Fun, and today we are doing part two of the Lady Jane Quilting Quilt Along. So as always, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you're notified when new videos drop. Uh, we just recently hit 9,000 uh, followers, and I gave away a bunch of pre-wound bobbins for the long arm. I don't know what I'm giving away for 10K yet, but I promise it'll be fun. I, at least at least you get that right um, in this quilt along we are using the Mary Beth pattern from Lady Jane quilting available at quiltable remember anytime you shop at quiltable my code ASF 10 will save you an additional 10% off that purchase and ASF like Adam so fun so ASF 10 will save you an additional 10% off of all your purchases there so remember that when you're shopping um, this is from Talene, Lady Jane Quilting. We're going to be using the digitized pattern for this. I am. But if you don't have a pro stitcher, you can get paper patterns. She has paper patterns for a lot of her designs. Uh, these are just two. This one's called Jane. This one's called Kelly. They're whole cloth designs and you have inspiration from these. You get the lines. You could use all the lines. You could use some of the lines. It doesn't matter. But there is a Mary Beth version of this. So if you don't have automation like I do, you can um, feel free to get the paper pattern. You'll trace it out on your um, fabric. The step we're doing today is basically when you go in and you trace those lines that you've drawn. Um, if you are going to be doing it that way, I would suggest getting a light box. I will link a light box below, one that I have um, there from the Daylight. I think I have the Daylight Slim 2 or Daylight Slim 3. And you can actually get them where there's a cutting mat you can put on top. So this is the cutting mat for my um, for my light box. Um, I have like I, I have the paper patterns, obviously. And there is one that I'm doing where I started drawing it. I need to find it. It's in a box somewhere because I started it back in Cleveland and then didn't get to like actually stitch on it because we moved. So it's somewhere, but I have a beautiful uh, custom dyed uh, whole cloth fabric by uh, Deborah Linker Dyes. And it was custom dyed for this pattern. So whenever I get to it, that's what I'll be stitching there. In this case, I'm gonna use Pro Stitcher because why not? If I have the option, Pro Stitcher always will help me make those beautiful lines nice and sharp, and then I can go in with extra detail. So in the first video, we talked about the pattern, we loaded our fabric, we loaded our backing and everything, and then we went in and basted this. And I basted this how uh, Mary Beth, one of our national educators, talks about basting. So we actually, basted basically a grid. Every four inches we stitched horizontal, every four inches we stitched vertical. So it's about the size of the palm of your hand um, is the only area that is not stitched. I did base this at Magnifico Thread. I'm gonna be stitching with Magnifico Thread. But one of the reasons I like to base with Magnifico Thread is tri-level thread is slippery. So it's gonna help us pull these basting stitches out. Usually, like when I do the whole, uh, a dream big, I will take the basting stitches out before I start before I go in and start stitching on it. In this case, I'm going to leave those basting stitches in and I'm going to pull them all out after before we add the tight detail only because I don't want anything to shift and this is going to hold everything nice and tight. So um, like I said, I'm using Magnifico. I have this beautiful green fabric. This is some uh, hand-dyed hand Robert Kaufman. Um, so I found a green to match. So this is Magnifico 2096. It matches great. And this is gonna be what I stitch my base design into. And then I'm gonna be using a yellow, I think. So this is 2061. And this yellow, I'm gonna go in and stitch some really tight details. And that is actually going to change the color of the fabric because I'm going to put so much thread down. The idea is just to lay a ton of thread down and um, that's going to help me get coverage and it's also going to give it a different tone. So we're going to be able to change the design up and how it looks and everything. One of the things with this design, especially if you're using automation, you really need to know that design path because we're gonna go in and we're gonna kind of change the path. It's gonna be very similar to the Midas quilt that we stitched out. Was it, my, it was Midas. Um, where when I open the design, I'm gonna have the whole design in front of me. So I'm gonna need to tell Pro Stitcher the parts that I actually wanted to stitch. So because of that, I have to be really careful that um, one, I'm making sure everything fits in my throat 
And um, two, I know the stitch out order, so I'm not surprised if I think it's gonna stitch this way and it starts stitching this way. And I, it's not gonna hit anything. So this is a recording, I'm gonna play it right here, I'm gonna insert it here. Um, this is a recording from Pro Stitcher Designer. I opened the Design and Designer and just simulated the stitch out so you can see the way it stitches. I won't make it go any faster than the machine actually goes, so it might be a few minutes long, but I'll throw some music behind it or something uh, just so you can see the stitch out. That's one of the great things about Pro Stitcher Designer is that you have the ability to go in and see that stitch path if you need to change anything. For those of you who might be doing this on a Moxie or a Simply 16, um, you can actually go in and you know cut pieces so that to basically insert jumps and have different sections stitch at different times. So then you can be safer that way too. I'm gonna insert that here and we'll see you back here in a second.
So um, I'm gonna bring you close because we're gonna open the design, get started. I have to get this thing threaded with my green. Oh my gosh, I just pulled all my thread out without tying off. Things, mistakes we make when I'm thinking about one thing and doing another. So I'm gonna rethread this. We'll see you back here in a second. All right, so here we are at our Pro Stitcher screen. And our first step is we need to open our design. So my design is on my thumb drive. If I have any machine that isn't a for, or, uh, if I have any machine that isn't an Infinity or running Pro Stitcher Lite, there is a black box behind this tablet and I'm plugging my USB into that box. If you have an Infinity, you know where your USB goes and if you have a Pro Stitcher Lite, your USB is on your tablet. You have two USB uh, slots on that tablet. So you're gonna put your USB right in there. I'm gonna go file, design, open. Over here I have all my designs that come included with Pro Stitcher. If you have a Pro Stitcher Lite, you just have this one file with PS designs. I'm gonna hit that little arrow down and I'm gonna select my D drive. And it's gonna bring up a bunch of different designs and I need to go down to quiltable because this is a quiltable design. And then I wanna to go to Talene to Mary Beth, which is the Lady Jane Quilter. There's my design, and I'm gonna hit open. And there we have it. You can see it is shining green and um, red, and that is due to these uh, basket weave designs, how they were digitized. There's a lot of jumps in there. They were digitized that way. It says it in the instruction. So um, I don't like my machine to jump. So when we actually get to this area, I'm going to let it jump because they're very small jumps. I mean, let's see, um, where are my crosshairs? Uh, let's see, I'm just gonna bring, uh oh, I'm on zoom still. We'll just bring this down to where my crosshairs would be. And these are, let's see, uh, my machine. Oh, these are like a quarter inch. So those jumps aren't gonna bug me. I'm gonna have to go in and trim them. That's okay, it's, it's something we have to do. Um, let's see, are we, we have some, oh, we do have jumps down here. So um, there are also some jumps down in the very center. We can see that if I zoom in. Um, when you look at this in Pro Stitcher Designer, you don't see all of this other detail. You don't see all these stitch out jumps and things that Pro Stitcher shows us. So that's fine. We are going to be able to make this work, no problem. So. The first section of this design, if I can zoom in, is this kind of teardrop. So it's gonna come from the center, do these details, come out to this teardrop and back, and then do the details. And how this is going to stitch out, it wants to stitch this one, then this one, then that one, then that one. So it's gonna do all four of these top ones before it comes and does the bottom ones. I don't want it to do the bottom ones. I need to make sure that it just does the four top to start out with. So I'm going to move my end point. And I looked at that stitch out that you've seen, and I know that it's going to stitch, 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 and then it's going to stitch this one. Uh oh, I'm gonna zoom in really quick. It's gonna stitch this one right here. And it's gonna stitch the top part first. Actually, it's gonna stitch the bottom part first. So I'm gonna bring my crosshairs. Let me see where I am. Actually, we're gonna center this first. Before we center this design, we wanna change the size. So we've opened it, we have it ready. I'm gonna to go to my modify tab, resize in the ribbon. And I can see that this is 43 inches wide and it should be the same tall. So I'm gonna hit my lock and I wanna drop this down to 40. So I'm gonna hit enter. And now, with because that was locked, my height is 40 and my width is 40. So now that is the correct size. Now we can reposition it on my dot. So I'm going to tilt you down. Sorry if you get dizzy, and I don't even think you're gonna be able to see this, but let's see. I can turn some lights off. And there we are. There's two little dots right here. Oh, you can see it. So this bottom dot from the last video is my center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my laser light, which is my needle, right to where that dot is. Oh, you can see the laser. Awesome. We'll turn you back up. 
let the screen adjust. And I'm gonna go back to my home. All of these settings are good. These are my pro stitcher settings. I'm actually gonna stitch this at 12 stitches per inch instead of my usual 10. Um, I like to stop needle down, my tension is good. And um, I'm running cruise, regulated cruise at 175 because that's what you should do if you're running pro stitcher. We'll tap off and close everything. So now I'm on my pro stitcher side, I'm in my pro stitcher. My crosshairs are orange, perfect. That means it's pro stitcher mode. And now I'm going to, I want to center this and I want to center this design right where my needle is. And remember the crosshairs represent where my needle is in my pro stitcher universe. So I'm going to go to my modify tab. I'm going to reposition because reposition is going to use those orange crosshairs as my reference and over on my sidebar, because remember everything's tab ribbon sidebar, I am going to hit center. And now I have just centered the design on my needle. I can zoom in, I can see how it's centered. So now that it's centered, I am going to zoom in so we can get close. And I know that this is going to stitch, 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 and then it's gonna come into this one. And it's gonna stitch that bottom part and then come back and do the top. So I'm gonna move my um, crosshairs over because I wanna move my stop point. And I wanna move my stop point to the beginning of this um, design so I don't have to worry about jumps and I can just tell it to go until it is done. So I'm gonna come up to my Pro Stitcher tab and this is just like if we were, uh, I'm gonna turn this camera a little bit. This is just like if we had a thread break. I'm gonna go new start end. So pro stitch your tab, new start end in the ribbon. And over here on my sidebar, I have a start and an end column. You can see I have umps now. This is the new Taco 2. So Taco 2 has umps and that's okay. That means jump. It's just not um, wide enough to actually write it out. It's not gonna hurt anything. Under end, I'm gonna hit auto and we're gonna see it turn green. And we all know, because we know Pro Stitcher, that green means it's selected. So perfect, we're selected. I'm gonna tap it one more time to turn it off. And if you notice, my needle, or uh, my crosshairs, and that circle red X are in the same exact position because by hitting this auto button, it brought the end point to where my crosshairs were. Now I'm gonna use these arrows over here and I'm gonna just move that up and I wanna move it up until it goes into, there we are, the design right before it. There we are. And now I'm gonna do some little tiny measurements. I can zoom in and I can move this down, oops, right to there. So that is that end point. Again, my endpoints are, are um, at zero. I'm gonna change that right now because um, I don't wanna have to tie off when they're all gonna meet up essentially in the same place anywhere. So I'm gonna go to my settings. I'm gonna turn auto jump and I'm gonna make this uh, one inch. So if my jump is within one inch, it's allowed to jump itself. So now I have everything lined up for my first section, this first section. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna run a test to make sure that this is gonna fit in my throat because these pieces are very long. It's gonna come all the way up to where um, kind of these two crowns of circles come into a point. That's how high this is going to stitch. So I'm gonna move my machine up and I'm just gonna move it all the way away from me. I'll zoom out and I can zoom back in. And let me zoom this camera in. Oh, this is nice that I can zoom in. I'm using a new camera. Oh my gosh, I'm loving that. Um, as you can see, it, this is pushed all the way back. And I could almost, if I were to zoom in here, I could almost stitch all the way to the top of this crown. Unfortunately, I can't stitch that far. And when you are working with a whole cloth quilt, a whole cloth quilt like this, the less you have to move and adjust things, the better because by moving less, things will line up better. I hope that makes sense. So uh, we do have it basted, all that stuff is going on to keep things from shifting, but things are naturally gonna shift as it stitches. If I'm remembering correctly, it's going to stitch the inside pieces and then it's gonna stitch the pieces with all the jumps 
and then it wants to stitch the feathers and this is this would be all the way around so inside pieces and then um basket weave and then feathers and then this whole outside crown this really big piece that will do the circles back and forth do kind of the circles back and forth and these two feathers at the top we can go all the way up until i get to my feathers so um these feathers around the basket weave so let's stitch this first section out first um it's going to stitch one two three four and it's going to stop i will just sit back i'll unzoom you sit back and let you watch we weren't quite ready um one more thing I was in Pro Stitcher New Start In because I had to move that end point. And when I come to stitch, it's not letting me hit the run button. And that's because if you are running 537 or after, you have to be in Pro Stitcher tab, quilt in the ribbon. And this will let you hit that run button. So if that ever happens, check that first. Where are you at in your ribbon? Are you in quilt? Because it won't let you quilt unless you are. All right, so there's our first section. And if I turn you up, we can see it stopped. And it stopped because we moved that stop point. If we wouldn't have moved that stop point, it would have just kept stitching and jumping and stitching and jumping. I'm gonna bring up my bobbin and trim because we're going on to a different section next. So now we need to do the basket weaves. And if I look back at my um, stitch out, it's gonna start stitching these bottom ones, stitch this one, stitch this one, and it's gonna jump all the way over to this piece, and it's gonna stitch one, two, three, is that right? No, it's gonna stitch one, two, three. So let's go in and let's change um, our start and our stop points again, so we're only picking up those pieces. So um, if I look, if I zoom in here, this last coming down piece is that last piece that's gonna stitch. We can see that stop point and the jump shooting to the left. So if I move my crosshairs to that spot, so this is the line we're looking for. And um, I also looked at my stitch out, so this is how I know. I'm gonna move my crosshairs to that line, pro stitch your tab, new start end in the ribbon, and I'm gonna hit end auto once to turn it on, once to turn it off, and I just want to, I can push my up button down one and it will end at that last jump. So that's where I want my start stop point. I want my start point. If I look at this, I can see this jump that comes all the way over and it sits right here. This is where this one starts. I'm going to move my crosshairs over. Can you still see that? Let's turn you a little bit. So instead of using my end point, I'm gonna use my start point. Auto once, auto again. So now my start point is here. I'm gonna move my jump up to where this starts. And if I zoom this out, there's a long jump from here all the way up to here. So that's how I know where this one starts. So now if I start this, it's gonna stitch this basket weave jump over to stitch this basket weave, then jump over to stitch this basket weave. And between this point and this point, I'm gonna get a long jump pause. So I'm gonna be able to trim it, but all of these smaller jumps, it's gonna jump itself. So let's go ahead and stitch that out. And I'm just gonna let the thing jump itself. Again, I can't hit run until I go into my quilt menu and I hit my run button.
All right, so all three of those are done. So let's bring up our bobbin and trim this. Got my regular scissors back. So now we're gonna jump on, let me see. Let's go back up to the screen. So now we're jumping back to the screen. I'm gonna zoom out with my um, bottom house, my refresh button. Now refresh, if you remember, brings everything that lives in your workspace um, and your crosshairs into view. So um, the next pieces it wants to stitch are gonna be the feather pieces and each feather is its own. And I think if I zoom in here, we can see it ends there. I'm going to pan and move this around. So it's going to stitch this feather and it's going to start at this feather and it's going to work its way all the way around. We can only do these six. So I'm just going to zoom in and look at my jumps. So here's one. It's going to stitch this one. Jump to here. Jump to here jump to here, jump to here. So I can do those three. And because those jumps are big, I don't have to worry about moving my end point other than I need to move my end point farther than that. I will move my start point to over here. So let's move that start point first. So I'm gonna put my crosshairs wherever I want it. I want it in this feather. Pro Stitcher tab, a new start end. And this is something that's really important because when I move this start point, it's gonna move the end point. You're gonna see them sit right on top of each other. And that's because I'm also gonna to have to move the end point because this start point is farther down in our sequence. You'll be able to see over here, if you look at the side at our um, scroll bars, when I hit this, both of those are gonna shift down. So I'm gonna hit it from up here and watch right here what's gonna happen. So now the start point and the end point are right in line with each other. And that's because the end point was in one space previous to this. So this brought them together because I moved my start point to a point that was after that end point. Now I'm going to hit my up on my jumps. It's going to pop my start point to there because that's the design we're working on. I need to zoom out. And now I have to go one, two, three, four, five. So if I hit my down arrow on my jumps, I can move this around until my uh, red arrow is over there. And I'll just move it. Do I have to do that? No, I could just scroll this all the way down to the end, but that will work. And you know what? I think I might want to have it. No, I only have those three. I was going to do the ones off to the sides. You can't even see. Um, I was thinking I might be able to do the one that lived here, but I don't have, oops, fuzz. I don't have my um, basket weave stitched yet, and I don't want to stitch the feathers until I have that basket weave in there, just in case. So I have my um, starts and ends ready. I'm going to stitch these feathers out.
So there is our first section that I can actually stitch out. I can't stitch out any more than this because I will hit the throat. Um, the video is getting a little long, so we're going to end it there. So I will see you back here in a second. All right, so that is where we're gonna end this part of the video because we're gonna have to start advancing. This part's already getting kind of long. So um, we've done almost half of it. We have three more elements to put out to, at the end and this side would be done. That's why I like the infinity. I have a lot of space and I can save time by not advancing so much. So in the next video, we'll advance. We'll probably advance up and finish these last three pieces and then come back and advance down and start building pieces in as we go. Because if I come down and I do um, the pieces that go here and here on the sides, I'll be able to do that final pass and just finish everything down there. So um, you might not be finishing this as fast because again, you're gonna have to advance through. So that's where the next video comes in and I show you how to advance. Um, I will be advancing this with the needle down instead of just using drag and drop. Uh, the needle down method is more precise. So I usually, when I'm doing something like this, I'm always going to do it that way. And um, yeah, I think it's already looking great. I'm going to take some pictures and post them online right now. So you probably won't even see this video for two more weeks. But um, I'm going to hit the road. So I need, I'm making a lot of videos while I'm home. So whenever I hit the road and I'm not going to be home for what, almost a month and a half, um, I have content for you all. So uh, I'm going to post some videos just in case some of you are thinking about doing this. I think it looks fantastic and it's only it's not even 50% done yet. I'm going to say 35% uh, done and it's still already looking good. So I'm very excited for this. But um, as always, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you're notified when new videos drop. I love making these videos to get you out of your comfort zone, do something on a project that looks super hard and maybe something you would have never thought of to do yourself or just a little bit intimidated. Uh, I drop new videos every Friday, so um, when you hit that bell icon, you should be notified when those videos drop as long as you have your notifications on on your cell phone. And um, yeah, I'm just excited. We'll see you all in the next video. Uh, if you don't, follow me on social media, Adam So Fun, with an S E W on Facebook and Instagram, so you can see all those photos that I post. Things that don't actually make the um, make the YouTube channel, like the uh, the photo of this quilt that I'm about to post. And you know, at the end of the day, it's just quilting. We want to have a good time, and even in that next video, if it doesn't line up perfect, we're still having a good time, so it's gonna be okay. We'll see you in the next one, everybody. Bye.